using quantum computers to build encryption that can't be broken by quantum computers. I'm Tanya Hall, and joining me is Dr. Vadim Lubashevsky, cryptography researcher at IBM Zurich Research Laboratory. Welcome, Dr. Lubashevsky. Hi, uh, just Vadim. Hi, Tanya. <laughs> well, thank you so much for joining us. Um, give us a brief summary of your background in cryptography. Uh, so I started as a PhD student at UC San Diego uh, a while ago, more than 10 years ago, let's leave it at that. Uh, and I've been working on uh, the cryptography um, that's uh, kind of becoming on vogue today a bit. Um, so sort of cryptography in general was, was uh, public key cryptography was, the, was started in the 1980s. And it allowed for two parties to communicate without ever having met before. So this was something pretty impressive, pretty amazing um, that didn't exist before then. And uh, for that to exist, you need, um, you need to have some um, assumed uh, hardness of some mathematical problems. And so people in the 80s kind of figured out which math problems are hard and how we can build crypto based on that. And, uh, but of course, you really needed this, for all this to work, you really needed the conjecture that these math problems are hard. So what people have started realizing in the late 90s is that maybe these problems are not hard if quantum computers become built. So there was a steady line of research um, that was trying to build, sort of rebuild the cryptography now based on different problems. And the, the hard part was coming up with some problems that were still be hard for quantum computers to solve and also to be sort of as efficient as, um, as, as you know, we were based on the old problems. And so sort of my research kind of started in you know, late 2000s. Uh, and um, and uh, we were sort of gradually making cryptography possible based on these problems. And now sort of a sort of luck, lucky timing that uh, quantum computers are actually starting to be built. And uh, NIST, uh, the American Standardization Body, said, uh, okay, we will probably need new standards in a few years. And so they have this uh, process that people have entered their uh, um, new, new cryptography algorithms that will eventually replace the old things that we had in the 1980s and we're still using now. So what is the knapsack problem and how does it illustrate uh, lattice-based cryptogra cryptography? Okay, so the knapsack, I see, came prepared. Uh, the knapsack problem, uh, is actually, interestingly, it's a problem that uh, existed since the late 70s. Um, and actually, people thought of using it for cryptography before. But they couldn't quite get it to be as efficient as the things we have based on the factoring and discrete log. So, so here's, here's the knapsack problem. Uh, do you have a piece of paper? Uh, I'm going to list out some numbers. So I'm going to come up with some random numbers between 1 and 100, OK? So 18, 31, 47, 56, 71, and 93. All right, you got all those? Okay. And now I'm going to add three of them together. And I won't tell you which ones. And I'm going to tell you the sum. It's 149. And now, so your job is to figure out which of those three listed numbers did I add up to get 149. So if you actually wrote down the numbers, this, <laughs> this uh, may not have been that hard because there's not many possibilities. Um, but now imagine 1,000 such numbers of 1,000 digits each. Now the problem is quite difficult. And if I add, let's say, 500 of them. So that's the knapsack problem, is to try to, you're given a bunch of numbers, and I picked a few of them together, I summed them up, figure out which ones I picked. And so this is a very hard problem. People have tried to solve it for a very long time, not related to cryptography at all. It, it has some optimization um, applications. And uh, this is actually related to lattice problems. Um, so a lattice, um, let's say it's a regular grid in some sense, in, in many dimensions. And it, it so happens that, all the solutions to this problem um, are um, form a, a lot, a very regular grid, a shifted regular grid. And your job is to find actually to solve this, uh, which, which number I picked, which, which set of numbers I, I chose, is actually to find the point in the grid closest to the origin, to zero. So that's, that's the, the geometric interpretation of this um, al you know, very algebraic problem with numbers. So this, and this is the problem that is really now the basis of a lot of our sort of hopes for quantum safe cryptography because we don't think even quantum computers are able to solve this problem. So what is then the relationship between lattice-based cryptography and fully homomorphic encryption or FHE? Uh -huh. So uh, fully homomorphic encryption, of course, which allows you to, um, to com compute, to evaluate a function over data that's already encrypted. So you don't have to decrypt the data. You can just, uh, you can evaluate the you can work on, on the data that's already encrypted without really knowing what the data is, so it's kind of magical. 
um, in that sense, and then kind of give the answer back to the to the person who encrypted the data for him to decrypt himself. Um, so the relation to, of that is that it, um, um, it the, in order to build it, you have to assume, at least the only way we know how to do it, is to assume that this knapsack problem is hard. So we don't know how to do it if, if factoring is hard. It doesn't really help us to build hopefully more encryption schemes, but we kind of have to assume that this problem is hard, and then we have a chance. We have we actually building can build polymorphic encryption schemes. How will FAG be implemented? I mean, will what kind of technical, I guess, math challenges still remain? Um, the hard part now is to uh, make it fast. So the um, the, the the main challenge is to now maybe there's a six order of magnitude or five order of magnitude um, a slowdown um, compared to just working with uh, regular data that's not encrypted. So for some scenarios, maybe it's okay if your, if your function is not very complicated, but sometimes it's not, uh, it's too much. So, um, so now really the challenges that people have been working on is trying to come up with new techniques to make it faster and uh, smaller and things like that. So it's really, it was a big breakthrough um, um, less than a decade ago to even show that this is possible. And since then, there's been really big, big improvements in terms of uh, efficiency. This has been the... Will I need to access a quantum computer to take advantage of quantum safe encryption? No, no, not at all. I mean, all this stuff can run on a regular computer. It's just a different math problem that, that is believed to be unsolvable by quantum computers. With quantum computers like IBM's Q coming online, what's the life expectancy of today's AES encryption? How long do we have before we need to transition to quantum safe crypto cryptography? So actually AES is a symmetric key encryption, meaning that in order to use it, both parties have to have a common secret and com um, share a common secret before starting to use AES. So actually that is not really in danger of quantum computing. Uh, attacks. Uh, it's um, it, it'll be a little bit faster to solve, but it's you know we have AES one twenty eight. People use it now. There's also AES two fifty six, and AES two fifty six should be secure forever. So quantum computers are not a danger to that. They are a danger to things like RSA, elliptic curve to P Hellman, and things like that. Those are public key uh, cryptography uh, methods that people basically use when we people first, for example, on the internet. The first thing we do is we would use a public use public key cryptography to share an AES key, and then we start using AES. But this act of sharing the key does require some uh, Diffie-Hellman problem, a factoring problem, to be hard, and that's sort of what's susceptible to quantum attack. Dr. Vadim Lubashevsky, cryptography researcher at IBM Zurich Research Laboratory. If somebody wants to connect with you, Vadim, if they want to maybe find out where the best barbecue is or find out more about the work that you're doing, how can they do that? Uh, just uh, send me an email. I'm easy to find. <laughs> Sounds good. And if you guys want to find more of my interviews, you can do that right here or go to tanyahall.net. Thanks for watching.